Yes, we are now in Revelation chapter 13, and we will do this very moment, part 3. I would like you to open your Bible, and we're going to read from Revelation chapter 13, from the 11th verse. So please, remember when you come to the Bible college, bring your Bible with you. Or if you have it on your cell phone, you are most welcome to look on your cell phone, but not Fox News and all kind of things. I mean the Bible on your phone. So Revelation chapter 13 from verse 11. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, so that he even makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is six, 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 known as triple six. When we look at this portion of Scripture, we first need to be reminded, and this is what I've dealt with you before. In part one, I talked to you about the kingdoms. When you look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet was like that of a bear, and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Now we all know this goes back all the way to Daniel chapter 7. Because in Daniel chapter 7, we had this visions of Daniel that the God of heaven gave him so that he could understand that the kingdoms of the earth is like wild beasts that devour and kill. And that is what Daniel saw. I mean, King Nebuchadnezzar, what he saw was kingdoms of mankind on the planet was like man reigning. That is why the image in Daniel chapter 2 very clearly, Daniel chapter 2, from a human point of view, kingdoms of the earth is man rule over man. But from God's perspective in Daniel 7, that kingdoms, the lion, uh, the bear, and the leopard, and the wild beast, they devour. In other words, kingdoms on the earth, they kill. It's like what you saw so currently that happened in, in the Ukraine with Russia. People will just kill each other for what they want, be it uh, to uh, extend their geographical borders, uh, be it for uh, getting their hands on the resources of countries, whatever it might be for political reasons or for uh, religious reasons, countries will fight. Presidents and kings, they will fight one another to get what they want. And so what we saw here is when we look in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 2, all these kingdoms what they are and what they do. Now, if you haven't seen it, please go to my video at Raymond Lombard YouTube Ministry, and you will find and you will see what I did and explained to you there. Now, the second part was the rise of the Antichrist. That's the one we did last week. And the rise of the Antichrist, where I spoke to you about this one world government that will be instituted by the Antichrist, because that's what he wants to do. He wants to rule the world. By the way, the Antichrist is never going to rule the world. He will rule big parts of the world. But he's, he can't be like Jesus and rule the whole world. 
before he, long before he will ro- rule the whole world, he will not uh, be there anymore because Jesus will come and he will uh, make very sure he will take him out at the battle of Armageddon in Re- Revelation chapter 19, uh, verse 19 and verse 20. But for now, we have already done, if you look at the book of Revelation, let me be very clear on that. When you study the book of Revelation chapter 13, you always have to be in mind there are three different things that is spoken of. Number one, we see the one world government, verse 1 to verse 10. Clearly, if you look at the book of Revelation chapter 13, you see a one world government that the Antichrist will try to make very sure to establish on this planet. Now, today, when you think about COVID and you see what happened in the nations of the world, it's very clear for you to see and understand that governments can be very powerful in a moment of time. They just tell you, go home, lock your door, nobody go to town, and we all went home. We all just did it. You had no choice. I mean, I've just been in Germany and England, and they will tell you, no, 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 sir, go back home. If you're not fully vaccinated, no airplane for you, go back home. I mean, governments make this decision, and you can do nothing about it. So when the Antichrist come, and when the, um, the governments of this world give him the power, he will be very strong. Because remember, in Revelation chapter 12, the devil and his angels was cast out of the heavenlies by Michael and his angels, which means that the dragon is now on earth, the devil himself, like you've seen in Revelation chapter 13, verse 2, the last part, the dragon gave him his power, he's thrown in a great authority. So what we're dealing with here. And very clearly you can see it, that he is a powerful man, the Antichrist. The devil gives him power, the dragon himself. Um, Now, the old serpent, known from the days of the Garden of Eden, according to Revelation chapter 12 and also Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. So, first of all, you have a one world government. Secondly, you have a one world religion. And I've just read it to you. There from verse 11 to verse 15. He exercises, verse 12, authority of the first beast, causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast. You can can immediately see now changes from political power to religious power. So now there's a change in world order from not only uh, uh, political and military strength, but now it moves over to a a religious uh, aspect. And because of that, you will also find If you read further in Revelation, this is now verse 16 to 18, we have a one world economy, the cashless society that we are about to to enter. So by the way, we have just found here in uh, in Cape Town, in uh, in the Western Cape, three places that do not accept your cash anymore. You pay either with a card or you pay on the internet. We don't want your money anymore. In actual fact, our people, some of our leaders was told by APSA Bank that uh, we are closing the tellers one by one and uh, we don't want to, uh, to receive cash anymore into the banks. All's going to change electronic. We just heard it this week. To be exactly yesterday. So I'm telling you, our world is changing and it's changing very fast. Be aware. So when we look at Revelation chapter 13, um, of the triple six or the mark or the name or the number of the beast that will be introduced, be very sure this is the direction the world is moving in. You can't get away from it anymore. But having said that as an introduction, I would like to, uh, to direct your attention to the second and the third part of Revelation 13 because we've dealt uh, previously with the first part, that's a one world government. I would like to touch at this point in time on the one world religion and the one world economy. Hopefully I will have time to address both at this point um, of our gathering. So let's look at it. He says in verse 13, I saw, an, uh, verse 11 from Revelation chapter 13, I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. So it's a very frightening thing that he see, but very clear in the vision that John saw, um, and that was that this beast that appeared, although he says he looked like a lamb, but 
but when he speaks, he sounds like a dragon. We know who this person is because the Bible clearly explained in chapter 16, verse 13, and 19, verse 20, and 20, verse 10, who this person is. Three times we have by name calling him the false prophet. Chapter 16, verse 13, and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There you have it. So what we do know, he's called the false prophet. In chapter 19, verse 20, it's very clear. <clears throat> and so Jesus, he captured uh, the beast and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence for the second time. And even in chapter 20, verse 10, <clears throat> for the third time, we read, the devil who deceived him was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. <clears throat> so clearly, we know we are dealing now with a person that will come to the fore in this world as a false prophet in the last days. Friends, I would like to tell you, the false prophet of Revelation 13 is the epitome of every false prophet who has ever gone before him. He will be the false prophet of all time on the earth. He will lead more people astray in the three and a half years that he's on earth than all the, false, all the false prophets ever put together in history of this world. Because billions of people, hundreds of millions of people will be deceived by this evil man. But when he appears, he appears like a lamb. Now you know, a lamb can't hurt anybody. A lamb is defenseless. A lamb can't protect. A lamb doesn't fight. It is one of these harmless creatures that God has made. So in his initial appearance, when he comes onto the world front, he will be like a lamb. This is a nice guy. And look at this man and listen what he's saying. But the Bible says when he starts speaking, the words coming from his mouth, is the words of the dragon, of the devil. This is how people will know. People that come to Christ during the, remember, after the seven-year tribulation, or during the seven-year tribulation, the problem that we have is by the time, if I ask you, where in God's prophetic watch will the false prophet appear? Well, first of all, is where are we tonight, uh, according to biblical prophecy? Well, we are here, right before the rapture. There's the rapture. So the rapture is taking place here at the end of the church era. So we are here in this green block. We are actually right at the end of this green block. This is where we are. Knowing that when the Antichrist comes, he will come for the seven year, one week in biblical prophecy. So the Antichrist appear here in the beginning. But the Bible only tells in Revelation chapter 13 that the false, false prophet, he will rise up in the middle of the seven year. Because here... It is wars, here is military power and political positioning of nations. But when we get to the second part, it changes into the religious as aspect and to the one world economy. Because now the power has been given to the Antichrist. And I mean, Revelation chapter 17 tells us that the nations give their power to the Antichrist. So when we talk about the false prophet, if we talk about in history, he's not here, although there's many false prophets, but, I've been, but they've always been here. They've even been here before the statue of Daniel. Because, I mean, this is only applicable from 2,600 before Christ. I mean, and with the legs and, and the feet, and I mean, we are still here. I mean, biblically speaking, and this is quite correct. I mean, um, because these ten kingdoms, they are forming this very moment. Let me tell you, this is one of the reasons why you have this nations and the upheaval of nations um, uh, and the... Uh, what's happening in the Arab world, the democracy in the Arab world that has come to the fore, and what's happening in Europe, like Poland and Finland and uh, Ukraine and those countries, they all want to be part of NATO nations, but England has separated himself. So what are you actually dealing with? You are, it's like the Bible says, iron and clay do not mix. So you have nations, they tie together, and nations that get disentangled. So you have nations that want to work together and you have nations that they don't want to work. That's why you see Russia pulling to the side 
don't want to be part of NATO, and for their own personal reasons, and it's not for me to speak about it because time will not allow me. But clearly what we can see, I'm talking about this time in history, in the last three and a half years before Jesus come for his second coming. Because remember, this seven-year period end at Armageddon. And after Armageddon, we have the thousand year of peace of the reign of Christ. That's where we're moving. So we know exactly where we are in God's prophetic watch. There's no doubt about it. The, the scriptures is very clear. But this person, uh, he will be with Satan, the dragon, and the beast, the Antichrist. They will be the satanic trinity. And that's exactly where the devil is. You have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, he finds two people on earth that he will give all his power and his throne, especially to the Antichrist and with his religious leader, the false prophet. So our world is moving in that direction, ready to be deceived. So, and the Bible says that like a lamb, now we know Jesus is the lamb of God, but Jesus is also the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's both. He can be very soft-hearted, very humble, but he can be very strong because he's also the lion from the tribe of Judah. And the fact that the false prophet appears like a lamb, of course, it gives you the impression of quite uh, innocence. You know, he's, he's not here to hurt anybody, but of course that is not true because many will accept him as a true prophet. And we know what will happen because the Bible is very clear and he will deceive. There's a lot of deception and lies going on around the false prophet. And the Bible is very clear when you look at this text, two horns. Of course, two horns in the Bible speaks of, um, uh, when we look at the Bible, when you look at the horns in the Bible, it speaks of, two speaks of testimony and horns to reign. In other words, he comes, he looks innocent, but in actual fact, he's going to overpower. He's going to take charge. And by the deceiving words of his mouth, many people will be led into deception. So the horns also speak of authority. In the Bible times, uh, in biblical image, image and imagery, it speaks of authority. So here comes a person, and he's got a lot of spiritual authority. And so people will accept what he has to say. So I'm warning you, the world is going to be deceived like never ever before in world history. Nobody has deceived the world that he's going to deceive, deceive them. And the absence of a crown implies that his authority will not be of a political nature because he's got no crowns. The beasts have crowns, but he's got no crowns. So he's not there to rule, but he is there to tell people to fall down and worship the one to rule, the Antichrist, because he is his prophet. But it's also very clear, the Bible says he speaks like a dragon. So when he speaks, his speech will be trained. So there will be people that will come to Christ after the rapture because the question is, will there be any people saved during this time? That's the question. That's the question. Is if the rapture takes place, does it mean that nobody can be saved? Of course people will still get saved because Revelation chapter 6 tells us about the souls uh, that fall down before the altar and pay the price because of uh, testifying about Jesus. Also Revelation chapter 7 talk about the great multitude of people that have come in. And also Revelation chapter 20 verse 4, those that refuse to receive the mark of the beast uh, that has been beheaded, um, that they will be martyrs. But people will die for their faith in this point in time because you will be told you have to receive the mark or the name of the beast. Today, you're not forced to take the vaccination. If you don't want to take the vaccination, fine. Um, there was a time they said, well, then stay home. But if you want to fly, you need to get the vaccination. So then people will just say, well, when I don't fly, then I don't have to take, fine, if it works for you, uh, if your job allows you. But some people will have to be forced to take the vaccination because if you don't take it, you can lose your job because how can you travel and go and do what you need to do? So the world is changing very fast and people will think, okay, well, I'm going to take it because otherwise I lose my job. Then I can't work. How will I live? This is exactly where we're going, the world. Going to be deceived. And they will do it for their own peril of their own souls. In other words, for a comfortable life on earth, 
to get a salary and to live is more important for them than to die for Christ. Well, then you're going to go to hell forever if you receive the name, the mark, or the number of the beast. The Bible is very clear on that in Revelation chapter 14. And he ex- verse 12 says, He exercises all the authority of the beast on his behalf, and he makes that the inhabitants worship the first beast. So clearly what we see here is you don't have a choice. In that days, you will have to fall down and worship the Antichrist. If you refuse to do it, you will be killed. Now, you refuse, you will be killed. It's better to be killed and to die a martyr's death and receive eternal life and live with Christ. I mean, there's a promise. There's a very beautiful promise in Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 that if you die because you are a martyr, there's a wonderful time that awaits you. And that is in the time of the thousand-year reign of Christ. It's very clear in verse 4. It says, I saw thrones, Revelation 20 verse 4, and they sat on them. The judgment was committed to them. I saw the souls of those who have been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image. This is now in the seven-year tribulation, in the latter part. And had not received his mark, which will be given in the last three and a half years, 42 months before Armageddon on their foreheads or on their hands, and they have lived, that they live, and reign with Christ for a thousand years. So they will receive crowns, and they will be rewarded, and they will live for Christ. So if you miss the rapture, you give your life to Jesus afterwards, you're going to go through the seven-year tribulation, and probably you will have to die for your faith in Christ. That's what's waiting for you, for people that wouldn't accept Christ today. But what we see here now in Revelation 13, is the absolute ultimate deception of the false prophet. Now, that coincides what you see here when it says, um, verse 14, uh, 13, he performs great signs so that those, uh, that, that he even makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. Now, I mean, if he has the power to call fire to come down from heaven and devour people that wouldn't believe, people are going to start believing him. Even more, he deceives those who dwell on earth by the signs which he was granted to do. Now, if you want to see the scripture that's parallel with this, very clear, the best place in scripture next to this is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11 says, the coming of the lawless one, that is now the Antichrist working with the false prophet, will be in accordance with the work of Satan. It's the devil. Displayed in all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, wonders, every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and to be safe. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie and so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. This is what Paul has written. And now we see what John is telling us. So the Antichrist and the false prophet, they will do wonderful signs and miraculous wonders, and people are just going to follow them in their millions around the world. And verse 14 is very clear in Revelation. Because of the signs he was given to do on behalf of the first piece, he deceived the inhabitants of the earth. So, here's the thing. Deception is a primary tool of Satan. Just think about it. Where did all the trouble in the world, in the world where did it start? In the Garden of Eden. Because Satan deceived Eve, the wife of Adam. And because of the woman being deceived by Satan, sin has come into the world. So Satan is the master deceiver. So just think, now the Bible says at the end of the days, you have this great deception, like you had in the Garden of Eden, with Satan, the old snake, the serpent, deceived Eve. 
Now, you have the two agents of Satan, the Antichrist and the false prophet, deceiving the whole world. Not only one or two people in the Garden of Eden, but billions of people, millions of people, thousands of millions of people living on earth. And so this is where our world is going. And of course, the false prophet, he will actually succeed in misleading people, especially the unbelievers and the wicked. They will follow him greatly. And many will fall under his spell because of the fact that he uh, is sheer doing of miracles, the wonders and uh, the things that he does. People will believe him. I mean, I want to warn you, today Christians, if they hear somebody's doing wonders and signs, Christians are running there and there. Hello? What do you think is the unbelievers going to do? They're going to run everywhere where they see this person doing signs and wonders. Everybody wants to see it. Well, they're going to be deceived if this is what you want. He will even make an image just like Nebuchadnezzar made an image in Daniel chapter 3 uh, where people will fall down and worship the image. And now verse 15 says, He has given power to give breath. Now this is, this is very interesting. And this is an absolute revelation that we've never heard and seen in the whole Bible everywhere. This is the first time ever that the Bible makes such a statement that he was given power, the false prophet, of course by the devil, the snake, Satan, to give breath to the image of the first beast so that it could speak and cause all who refused to worship the image to be killed. So there's going to be an image erected of the Antichrist. And those who do not fall down will be killed. But what is interesting, this image of the Antichrist will be able to speak by a miraculous way, and there's two possibilities what's going to make it to cause to speak. But that it can speak is absolutely true. I once read that Pascal said, men never do evil so completely and cheerfully as when they do it from a religious conviction. Just think of the Inquisition. Just think how they killed Christians through all the ages. I mean, even today, uh, many of these Muslims in Afghanistan and Pakistan, uh, these suicidal bombers, when they kill people that come to places to pray and to worship the Lord in Sri Lanka, and especially in countries like Afghanistan, they, they will put these uh, suicidal belts around them with uh, explosive uh, devices in it, and they will blow up people in pieces. Hundreds of people, thousands of people have been killed like that because of a religious conviction. They think if they do that, there will be seven virgins waiting for them in heaven. My word. Who wants seven virgins anyway? I mean, it's, it's enough to have one wife. I mean, can you think to satisfy seven wives? You know how much it costs to keep one wife going. So I always laugh when I see these things and I'm like, What's wrong with people? Don't you understand? And it's, it's all a lie. It's just lies. And because of these lies, they've been deceived. I mean, truly, people are deceived. And because of that, they have this conviction that if they, I mean, Jesus said that there will come a time in the world when you will be persecuted and you will be killed by disciples. He's talking about these disciples. And those that do it to you will believe that they honor God in heaven when they do it. How deceived can you be to kill people like that and think that God is satisfied with that? So when we look at this false prophet, not only causing fire coming down from heaven, but convincing people to worship the Antichrist, then we realize that um, yes, a terrible time coming on earth. Now we do know that, I mean, for this point in time, in church history, we have well moved on. We are, we are entering this time, which means we are very close to this. I mean, if the rapture would take place today, if the rapture would take place now, three and a half years from now, the Antichrist will be in full power. I mean, you talk about 1,260 days from here. You talk about 42 months. You talk about three and a half years. He will be in full power. After the rapture, within three and a half years, he will be in full power in the world misleading millions of people that has not been saved 
and has not, uh, uh, has not shared in the rapture. But the, the, the different thing here is, when Nebuchadnezzar, when he erected the statue like this, which stood up in the Dal of Dura, when he did that, there was not a voice that had breath to speak, that people would fall down. They played musical instruments, six different kinds of musical instruments played. And when that music played, people had to fall down. And of course, Daniel, uh, friends, they did not fall down. Sadrach, Mishra, Abednego, and therefore they were cast into the furnace. But I mean, the Son of God met them there, and He saved their lives. But the point is, what's going to happen now at the end of time, that image of the Antichrist will be able to speak. And you can just think how terrible it's going to be when people stand before that image, and that image will say words and speak condemnation or something over that people. Now, the, of course, the, the question would be, for this phenomenon to take place, according to what Scripture tells us, I mean, it has to happen. The Bible says, it. so there's two possibilities. Either it means that the false prophet has given to this image a satanic spirit, a demonic spirit that can speak. It caused the image to speak. Or that there has to be some form of technology that has to be invented to make it to speak, to say what they wanted to say. Whatever it is, it's, it's not up to, for us to decide which one it's going to be. Probably it's going to be because of the uh, fallen angels and because of the war that's been lost in the heavenly prior to this chapter. Um, for sure, it is demonic. Whatever it is, demonic. Which, for me, the best option would be it's going to be a, a false religious spirit. It is definitely going to be some sort of satanic spirit that will be able uh, to speak. And, of course, we know that there will be no worship of the true God because the worship of the true God, if ever people are told not to worship God in heaven, is going to be here. All worship to God in heaven will be prohibited on the earth. You're not allowed to pray to the God of heaven. If you pray to the God of heaven, you will be killed. You're not allowed to call on the name of Jesus. If you call on the name of Jesus, you will be killed. This is the world that we are moving in. So the world is becoming a more and more tougher place for true born-again Christians. Because the pressure is mounting and it's going to build up. And those who refuse, well, they will pay with their lives uh, because of their refusals. Others will pay in different ways. You will lose your income or you will lose your livelihood. Well, it brings me to the last part, and that is verse 16 to 18 of the false prophet where the Bible says, and he will cause, now this is now very important, this is in closing, a very important thing I need to share with you. It says, he will cause both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. So there's going to be a number, a name, or a mark. We do not have the name. The Bible doesn't give it. Nowhere. We do not have the mark. The Bible gives it nowhere, but we do have the number. The Bible only gives us one of the three, because the Scripture clearly says, except he who has the mark or the name or the number of his name. We don't know his name of the Antichrist. We don't know his mark, which is probably an emblem of his kingdom. But we do know his number. Here is wisdom. Let him, verse 18, the last verse of chapter 13, let him who has an understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, his number is triple six. So what we clearly see here from Scripture, here in Revelation chapter 13, is when it says he who has wisdom, in other words, it refers here the ability to know the will of God, to have understanding, uh, to, to process what the Bible is saying. The Bible says, if you have a mind, if you can see, if you can hear, if you can understand, understand, hear me, says the Lord. There's going to be a name. There is going to be an image, a mark, and there's going to be a number. Now, many people will be deceived by saying, oh, no, no, I don't take triple six, but I will take his name. Oh, no, 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 
I don't take triple six, but I will take his mark. It's one and the same. The name, the mark, or the number. And if you don't have it, then it means you cannot buy or sell. You can do no business. If you work for the municipality or you work for a company, they can only pay the money directly into your bank account. They're not going to give you money. Now, if you don't have the mark, the name, or the number, you can't extract the money. You can't use it. There's no way that you will be able to work with your money. And so the big problem here is, of course, me and you. If we say, what is the name of which one in the Bible of all the names of the beast is going to be? Well, the Scripture does not unlock this mystery for us. You will not find it in the Bible. It is not in the Bible. The Bible doesn't give us His name. What we do have, uh, or maybe let me first say this, speculation is going to bring us nowhere. Thumb sucking, I'm not interested in. We have the Scriptures. So to play guessing, to say to me, is it Putin, or is it the, the Pope, or is it Biden, or whoever, whatever in the world, you know, Mao Tse Chung, and they've got all these names that they've given all the years to whoever's been in power. There was a time they said it's Barack Obama. Others said it was Trump. Well, it's not one of them, friends, because the Antichrist cannot be revealed before after the rapture. We don't know we're still going to be alive and on planet after the rapture. So that time has not yet come. So to speculate the identity of the person is a futile exercise. Your guess is as good as mine. It's going to bring us nowhere. You know, people would say sometimes, go, it's Bill Gates. Now it's Elon Musk or, you know, please. Let's just be what the Bible tells us to be, people of the Word of God. The Word of God says, I will give you number of his name and of his mark. And that is triple six. Six, six, six. Now think about it. If it is, the reason why it's six, because it's a number of man. Because you were created, human beings, was created, Adam, was created on the sixth day. So because of that, that is a number of man. Now, being the number of man, and the Bible says the full completion of the number of man, triple six, which is short of seven, because seven is a perfect number of God. But here's where we are. The triple six, everybody that is in the kingdom of the devil, of the Antichrist at that point in time, will have the same number, triple six. So that's not your bank account number. Then we are all having the same bank account. It's not the bank account number. It is a number that identify your loyalty to the Antichrist. So you have to accept the triple six saying, I accept him to be my Lord. I worship him. Now, if you say no for the triple six, you will be offered the mark. If you say no to the mark, you will be offered the name. Now, it's very interesting. If we study it in the Bible, it's very clear that the triple six, if it is a numerical number, which it is, then if you look at the Hebrew language and the Greek language, when you look at the Hebrew language, the letters of the alphabet stands for specific numbers. And in Hebrew, it will be like this. There's 22 characters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 100, 200, 300, 400. So there's your characters. So these numbers, 1 to 10, from 10 to 100, from 100 to 400, 22 of them. These numbers, if you put them together, if you work these numbers, like for instance, if I ask you what is your name, and you, and you say your name is Raymond, then I can take your name and I can work out according to the Hebrew calculation what is the numerical value or, or number of your name? But I can use a 10 or I can use a 20, I can use a 100 or I can use a 1 or a 5. 
So because of all the different calculations, to get to triple six, I can use hundreds of different uh, calculations of a number. So I can come out with thousands of names on the planet, thousands of names that all come to the numerical value of 666. So to look at the world today and to say this person or this person, he's the Antichrist because of the triple six, you just can't work it that way because there's thousands of names and different calculations that can come to that number. All that the Bible is telling us, the day when the Antichrist appears and you hear his name and you work the numerical value, it will be equal to triple six and you will know. Well, here's where I'm at. I'm not interested to know. I'm not going to be around. Why would I be interested to know? I'm not going to live at this time on earth when the Antichrist and false prophet is here. I'll be part of the rapture. So why do we care what his name is? Why do we care? This is not for our interest. God didn't, if the Lord wanted to tell us that, he would put it in the Bible. If he wants us to know his name, he would put it directly in the Bible. And God is not interested for us to know it because we're not going to be here anyway. But here is where I am. Those who will receive the number triple six will be liable to pay with punishment forever in the fires of hell, according to Revelation 14. Because Revelation 14 says, the third angel, verse 9, followed them. If anyone worship the beast and his image and receives the mark on his forehead or on his hand, not on a bank card in your back pocket, on your forehead or your right hand, he himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out in the full strength of his cup. And it says in verse 11, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receives the mark of his name. Hell, there's a one-way ticket to hell, to every human being who dares to take the triple six, the mark or the name of the beast. There's a one-way ticket to hell, guaranteed, Revelation chapter 14. Because a person that receives it has to plead his loyalty to the false Christ, the Antichrist, and not the true Christ, the one that died for our sins on the cross. So if you exchange the true Christ of heaven for the Antichrist, you will pay with, for your, with, with that with your life forever in hell. So it brings me to this point. The beast out of the sea, Revelation chapter 13 in the beginning, we know it's the Antichrist and will be a political leader. The beast that comes out of, this, uh, out of humanity, out of the earth, the lamb that had two horns, he will be a spiritual leader. And the doom of the false prophet is secure. In closing, I want to say, so what is the end of the false prophet? Well, it's the same end as the Antichrist. And I'm, in closing, I would like to read to you Revelation chapter 19, verse 19 and 20. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army, Jesus. In other words, the Bible says when he comes for his second coming, the moment he comes with his horse at the end of the seven year, the Antichrist, the beast, and all the armies are ready there for Armageddon. And the Bible says in verse 20, Then the beast was captured. And with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, uh, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. That is the end of the false prophet. So I've got news tonight for the Antichrist and false prophet. Your end will be in the lake of fire. Amen? So next week, friends, we will move to the fourth part of Revelation chapter 13. And if you wonder, but we've come to the end here of the last verse. No, we're not yet, yet there at the end. We'd love to share with you next week we continue our study. Thank you so much, and thanks for tuning in.